so it's opening night and uh, we saw Split. We saw Unbreakable finally. So let's complete the trilogy. So we're doing today's review. It's going to be written, produced by M. Night Shyamala and uh, produced also by Blumhouse Productions. And I'm talking about Glass. Glass, the follow-up to the last movie, Split, which happened in 2016, uh, features finally we have all three main characters. We have Mr. Glass, we have the Horde, and we have David Dunn's character. All, all the characters are reprising their roles from the previous films. It appears that David Dunn has, as the overseer, has accepted his the fact that he is a superhero. Mr. Glass is still in jail after what happened in Unbreakable and <clears throat> James McAvoy is still running around kidnapping girls after the end of Split. Progress! And this movie sees them all get captured and taken to a facility to undergo treatment to show that they're not superpowers. They're not super powered. And this movie's really a mixed bag. Um, easily, I, I, I enjoyed it more. I thought the first act was fine. I thought the second act was really boring. And I enjoyed the third act. And I find like a lot of reviewers right now are going in the opposite direction, saying they enjoyed the second act and did, hated the third act. This is a non-spoiler review, so... Let's get through the good, the bad, and other thoughts. Once again, the person who, the actor who does the best of not being shamalized is James McAvoy, who plays his 27 personalities, and I could swear there had to be like three or four new ones. There was a Spanish lady, there was uh, another girl, but I, I couldn't figure I guess she was a horny teenager and uh, there was a reviewer all types of stuff now and he shined in every role and it was in this movie especially it was amazing to watch him switch between roles while on screen like he would literally talk like Patricia who we got to know from the first movie and then go straight into Hellwig, who was the nine-year-old version of him. Or he would go straight to Dennis, who was the, the guy who had OCD disorder. And he really shined, even when he had to go into the beast mode. He was the best part of this movie, hands down. Was, so his performance was on point. Um, Bruce Willis, I had lots of problems with his performance in Unbreakable because he got shamalized. He was talking very much in a monotone fashion with no emotion. Yes, I understand. Was I ever sick? I don't remember being sick. In this movie, he's actually emoting. He's acting amazing. And he was really good. Samuel Jackson is Samuel Jackson. Nothing, he was perfectly fine for his role. He played it well. I will say the bad thing about Samuel Jackson is his character doesn't show up until a good hour into the movie, which is kind of strange since the movie is named after him. Um, and then even when he's finally introduced, he takes 20 minutes at least to do anything because he's supposedly comatose because he's been in this psychiatric ward the whole time. This special psychiatric ward. Bad, all the Shyamala stuff that no one wants in a movie. The fact that people still talk straight into the camera looking at the audience. And he does it so much and I don't understand why. It's fine for something like this, a movie review, where I am speaking to you, but if I'm talking to another character and I'm looking straight at the camera and we don't see any facials from the other character, 
what what's the point of that i get you on the actor to speak to the audience but you don't have to put them face first into the camera another shamala bad thing god damn it why can't he hire some a cinematographer i get he wants to be the next paul rodriguez but he's not paul rodriguez paul rodriguez knows how to shoot a scene and hold a, a screen there are many times where I was baffled by what I was watching and the way his camera would just shift and I'm like, what was the point of all of that? The movie is also way too long. Even at two hours and ten minutes, it felt like the middle section of the movie, the whole part where they're in the psychiatric ward, just went on for fucking ever and it, it wasn't interesting in the least bit. There are parts of it, but it, a lot of it repeated itself. So I, I definitely wasn't um, cool with any of that stuff. I also felt they underused some of the characters from uh, Split. Like they have um, Anya Taylor-Joy in this movie and she really didn't do that much. And this movie is supposed to take place a couple of weeks after Split. And she recovered really quickly from that traumatic experience I don't know I just I didn't get it um uh, Sarah Paulson as the doctor I thought she was fine I didn't I thought she was fine as the, the real villain of the movie um this movie is also going to come down to whether you like the twists or not I like the twists I like the third act a lot. Some of the reveals though were like, I, there's one specific reveal where I was literally sitting there thinking to myself, did I miss a scene in the movie? Cause I think I did. But then I realized I didn't miss a scene. It was just something that popped up out of nowhere. And I think it's very interesting. I think the ending definitely leads itself up to sequels which is perfectly fine. I also think the ending will be very divisive. I, I can see a lot of people disliking it for reasons that I'm not going to go into in a non-spoiler review. And I can also see, like myself, I enjoyed it. It made sense. It was given contents. Um, by the time you, when you see the doctor, Sarah's, Sarah's, uh, yeah, Sarah's character, once she explains it, it makes sense. Which is kind of cool. They did retcon something about James McAvoy's character. Which I was like, uh, I don't know if I buy it, but I'll take it. Samuel Jackson saying it. I'm on board. There is a speech, though, that Samuel Jackson says in the movie. It's so bafflingly stupid. Because if... If you know M. Night in any way or follow the trades or the buzz about him or if you've seen Lady in the Water, there's a scene where Samuel Jackson is looking directly into the camera and giving a speech. That is so... M. Night wrote that because he's talking about himself. But in this movie, Mr. Glass is going to be his proxy. He's going to tell it to the audience. And it was such a bonehead decision that I really was like, after I heard this speech, I was like, fuck you. I did a loose black fuck you. <clears throat> but um, I did like the ending. I liked the way it opened things up. I liked the first big fight scene at the beginning, which I was surprised that we got one so early in the movie. James McAvoy was top notch as always. Bruce Willis actually came up to act. Samuel Jackson's his awesome self. So I really enjoyed this movie. It just, it has what, I thought this was way better than Unbreakable. Unbreakable was just a boring slog to me. This movie made sense. There is a point at the end though where they do hammer in a lot the stuff that uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character Glass was doing in Unbreakable. Where he was like, Two villains or whatever, a superhero and a, a villain will meet because they have to. 
They do that a lot at the end. Um, that's all really much I can say. I thought it was perfectly fine. It wasn't perfect. I wish the middle wasn't so boring, but I thought the it bookended nicely. And it does really lend itself to not only having a sequel, but I would watch another sequel. I don't know if I would be like, you know, throwing a pom-pom saying I want to see it. But, you know, I'd be like, oh, there's a sequel to Glass. All right, let's do it. So, uh, at the end of the day, I would probably give it a 6.8. Has its usual M. Night problems. Middle part boring as hell. Movies too long. With no for no reason. Um, beginning saved it. End saving. Acting definitely saved it. So yeah, that's my thoughts. Uh, did you see Glass? What did you think of the ending? I know a lot of people want to compare it to the Last Jedi. Let's not compare it. But I, it is very divisive ending. So. Did you see Glass? Do you plan on seeing it? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and tomorrow we will be doing anime. We will be at a, a Fathom event, and I have someone here who is going to be doing the review with me, and of course, it's going to be spoiler filled. We'll try to do a non spoiler one, but I don't know how much that's going to work. Because someone is very excited to see this movie. So, bye.